Originally, I wasn't going to bother doing this video. I mean, Jeff Hardy got arrested. Breaking points tonight. Obviously, a lot of people have covered these subjects by now. But I'm just going to give some thoughts on both of the topics. Um, Jeff Hardy being arrested. I was just like, oh God, what's happened this time, you know? Just that kind of mind frame. But when I see what has actually gone down, it's, I don't know. I mean, I'm not shocked that it'd have pain pills or would have done some coke or something. But it's just like the amount of stuff that has been found at his place. It just seems really suspicious. And I just wonder how he's going to explain this one. You know, I've seen on the news sites that he's been tweeting, wait till the explanation comes out, and apparently he got caught delivering opium or something to some people's house. So, to be honest, I don't really know what to think. I mean, until some kind of explanations come out as to why he has all those somers and Vicodin and anabolic steroids, then we're not going to know, are we? But, that's the, that's the main thing I find really bizarre. I mean, I like other people. I'm not that surprised. I'm not surprised that it'd have something like that or be caught in possession with something like that. It's just the amount of it all just seems a bit like, what the fuck are you doing? I just really hope he isn't dealing because, like, why would he be doing something like that if he's been the main eventer on SmackDown for months and has had the title? And it also raises question, like, even more about the wellness policy. If he was still, like, doing that stuff and getting away with it. But, I don't know, on the other hand, you got to be thinking. He is taking these high risks. And it's probably pretty easy for him to cave in. Or he may have like, just felt like partying and someone offered him something. And then he just got back into these ways. You just don't really know. I think a lot of people have really ju jumped fast to like jump down his throat and or defend him for being a good wrestler. But I'm kind of sitting on the fence till I know more on this one. I mean, as I say, the thing that baffles me is that he might have been trafficking and he has all that shit. You know, because it's one thing to use it, but abusing stuff isn't good. Not good at all in my book. But yeah, I guess we'll just have to find out what happens. I think like within time, within months, it may just like clear over and he may be back in WWE again or whatever. But if he's found guilty of trafficking or dealing or whatever, that is fucking bad. And yeah, I just hope he's alright. I, to be honest, I don't know Jeff Hardy. No, none of us do. But from what I see, he just seems like a normal kind of person. And like that's how he's relatable to the fans and stuff. He's just like another freaky guy that's like a bit of an outcast or something. And may have gotten involved in some shit. Or like has a few demons and issues to deal with. So I don't really have anything against Jeff Hardy. I just hope... That he isn't abusing stuff or dealing and trafficking this stuff because that is bad. But we'll just have to wait for the full story, won't we? Yeah, on to Breaking Point. I think the card for Breaking Point looks fairly promising, actually. Yeah. I mean, there's um, what's just been added. Kofi Kingston versus The Miz has been added as a United States title match. And this seems a bit out of the blue for me. I mean, I haven't watched Raw a full episode in months. I've seen clips of it. But I don't really know what's happening. I know The Miz has some kind of new look and the United States title is what he was after. And I fully expect him to win it. At this event otherwise it's a bit pointless it's not like they're doing anything with it anyway and the Miz has the kind of mic skills and brash attitudes 
that would be good to like carry off a good title reign, I think. And it's quite interesting that this has been added. It's a shame um, Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison has been taken off. But I've seen reports that they can't come up with a finish of it that will benefit both men. And I can kind of agree with that as well. I think the best thing to do with that is just leave them to call each other out for like a month or so. And then just hotly build the match. You know, you don't know it's going to happen. Keep it old school. Build it up. I mean, we all know they had a match like a month or so ago where Dolph Ziggler grabbed his tights and pinned him or whatever. But just build it up, then have a match eventually. Keep it old school like that. I doubt it's going to happen, but you could only dream. And um, there's Christian versus Regal. Hopefully this will be longer and better than the SummerSlam match. Kane versus Great Carly in a Singapore Kane match. I see a lot of people giving this flack for being on here. And yeah, while it's not ideal or great to have these, like, Great Carly against Kane, or Kane against this lumbering piece of shit, um, it could be, if they're left, if they could have Singapore Canes and, like, left to whack the shit out of each other really brutally, it would be fucking great. But that's not going to happen, is it? But, you know, that's just my opinion, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be too... They, I doubt they'd take too long over it, to be honest. Big Sh Show and Jericho is MVP and Mark Henry for the tag titles. I really don't know who's going to win this, to be honest. I could see Jericho and Show keeping it for a bit longer. But I kind of like the idea of MVP and Mark Henry. So, I, who knows? Oh, yeah. DX versus Legacy. Submissions cut anywhere. I think this has potential to be pretty good. If the DX lets Legacy have their offense in and they just go around the arena and stuff, this should be pretty cool. But... I can't see Triple H submitting to those guys. Sean might do, but then again, I still can't really see that happening either. So, yeah. Randy Orton versus Cena in an I Quit match. Hopefully they can do this well. I mean, oh, I don't know. I can't really see... John Cena saying, I, yelling I quit in a microphone, the way he's being built up. But, um, at the same time, I don't think it's right for Orton to drop the title to Cena. So, yeah. And Undertaker as a CM Punk is the match that everyone's looking forward to, and I myself am definitely looking forward to. Um, but who knows what it's going to be like. Undertaker hasn't wrestled in months. He could be a bit out of shape, but then again, he could be rejuvenated and raring to go. So that one could go either way as well. This That's the feeling I get from this card. It could go either way in quality, but I'm just hoping that it'll lean towards the good way and will be good. And also, I don't give a shit that it used to be Unforgiven and change its name to Breaking Point. I think whatever, you know, same with the other pay-per-views. I felt bad when they changed the In Your Houses to, like, the names and stuff. I thought that sucked back in the day. I enjoyed In Your House. It was a good, nice little fix of wrestling a month. But now they have too many pay-per-views anyway, so fuck it. Let them do what they want. And, you know, as a wrestling fan, I hope it comes back to great quality. But I'm just going to pick and choose whatever. I may stay up and watch this on a stream. I don't really know, and I don't really care, but if I do, then I'm definitely looking to forward to Punk and Undertaker, that's for sure, and the rest of the card could go either way in quality, that's my opinion, cheers.